Welcome back, everybody, to our final match of this Top 8 Sunday. Once again, I am joined by Stefan Mott. I am so excited for what is going to be, I think, a really interesting match between Thailand and Poland, our last section of this Top 4 that we have yet to fully break down. The rest of it has already been determined and is super exciting on a Sunday to see the results roll in as we are getting to cast them. Yeah, this one's going to be really cool. If you guys were here during the break, you saw the teams that were about to be going, uh, that are about to go head to head. It's the one that we've been waiting for, I think it's safe to say, from Chaya Watt. Uh, I'm pretty sure he has not used this team yet in World Cup, but we're looking forward to this one. We'll see it in a sec. First, though, we have some other matches to go over. Of course, four other matches today. The doubleheader between Australia and Korea going 1-1 with Australia winning the set 4-3. Ryan Lissetto coming out over Varun in the Canada versus India match, which also means 4-1 for Canada in that match. They also have qualified to face off against Argentina. And then Brady Smith uh, getting the win over Aurelia, but we did find out that France took the win in that match. I am sure the French players right now must be overjoyed, right? I know I saw a little bit of a pop-off in some, in some of the chat just from those French players, a huge win for them to be able to move forward. However, they don't know who they're playing yet, and neither do we, so we know who it is going to be between. But currently, Thailand is up 3-1 over Poland. I think some of those last matches are still being played or will be played in a bit. So hopefully, you know, if we don't find out the winner between the end of this match between Fiona and Chiawat, then we may be able to have those results for you by the end. Unsure as of yet how that's going to play out, but... Like you said, this is exactly the team that I think we've been wanting to see. We had Shiawat on last week as well, I believe. Or at least we, I know, spoke of him or of his team. But like you said, we are hearkening back a little bit to the 2019 era a little bit with what is going to be a fun Xerneas Groudon team. The reason why we've been wanting to see this, if, you've not, if you haven't kept super up to date with all of the different nationals going on in the lead up to Worlds, Chayawat won the Thailand nationals with Xerneas Groudon, with this Xerneas Groudon. So we know it's good, and it's just such an off-meta pick that in theory should be really bad, but it's clearly not, and Chayawat is capable of piloting it, piloting it to the highest level, going up against Fiona, of course, uh, who's been having a really, really good season herself. 5-2 uh, so far um, in her debut season for Poland. And we can see also in 2022 this year, she did get top 16 at the Vancouver Regionals, the first Hatterini Series champion. And of course, some older results in there as well. Yeah, and a lot of results, I think, between both of them. Like you said, that national champion for Thailand, along with playing in day two worlds of this year, both of these players have results that, I mean, you say older, but they're all within the past four years, which is incredibly great to have such recent play in your results, especially because there's, you know, there's a lot of experience that you can pull from, especially in prior formats, players that have, you know, maybe been a little bit more storied. They have, a, you know, they've got a crazy wealth of knowledge, but sometimes when you are so focused and so talented in one specific season, it can really pay off. However, Xerneas being faced off against something like a Zosh and its mortal enemy, just as usage stats have changed over the years, paired with that grad on Incineroar, Charizard, Venusaur, and Grimmsnarl. Whereas on Fiona's side, she is also running the Kyogre paired with her Zosh and Incineroar, Regieleki, Gothitelle, and Rillaboom. So I think it's really interesting, right? Because this Zosh is something that loves seeing Xerneas, but doesn't exactly love a lot of the other things on that team. Yeah, it's a really interesting matchup, I think. I mean, we have uh, the the bit of the uh, the weirder, less standard variation of the Swordfish here with that Gothitelle in there, the Regieleki as well. Uh, Regieleki, not the most uncommon thing. But, uh, you know, it, it isn't seen quite as much on the Swordfish compositions. And then, of course, pairing something like potentially a Life Orb Regieleki next to a Helping Hand Trapping Gothitelle is something that we've seen just kind of go burr in previous formats, <laughs> even if we haven't seen it quite as much in this one. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see just how she decides to play this game, I think, because on the one hand, you have to respect the Xerneas, but on the other hand, you kind of have to expect that it probably won't come to this matchup. Disappointingly, right, for us, because I'm sure we would love to see it. However, Gothitelle, Zashin are going to be the lead for Fiona on her side. And then on Chiawat is the Incineroar and the Venusaur. So at some point, you know, you have the opportunity to trap. You're not going to allow for Chiawat to maybe bring in something like a Groudon and change the weather if he really wanted to boost the speed of his Venusaur. 
Yeah, that's actually a really cool lead here by Fiona, because even with the minus one, uh, he's sort of neutralizing the uh, Intrepid Sword there on the Zashi, and it's still going to be able to apply quite a lot of offensive pressure. And uh, like you said, without the, the Groudon being able to be switched in here, the Venusaur is going to be a little bit hard-pressed to accomplish very much. You can't even parting shot into the Groudon with the sub uh, with the uh, parting, uh, the fake out, sorry, going into that Incineroar. And the substitute coming in for Fiona is also setting up for success, especially with the Sleep Powder missing there on the Gothitelle. Yeah, a great Sleep Powder miss. I'm sure any Sleep Powder miss that you receive is pretty great anyway, but not taking that onto your Gothitelle, even though it allows this uh, Zacian to get that substitute up for free. You know as well if you're the Venusaur, you can't exactly go for a Sleep Powder into that slot. So the Sleep Powder into the Gothitelle definitely made sense. It at least also kind of covers for Fake Out on either Pokemon, but if you go for the Fake Out into the Incineroar, you have the faster ones, you can at least stop it from coming out onto your side, especially into your Zacian, who I think having a substitute up in this Shadow Tag positioning is going to be really helpful for moving forward especially if you need to now start getting off some big behemoth blades if you need to but even still maybe now is you know taunt would be a great option i know that we just saw it get clicked into that venusaur would be huge behemoth blade though going to come out first thanks to this option just being the fastest thing on the field as there is no sun in the sky hitting into the venusaur as well and venusaur being brought down to the bottom 25 percent of its hp really down into that red there and it's going to allow for this venusaur sleep powder to connect though this turn which means there won't really be big. a taunt that goes off yeah, really, really big. That taunt was into the Incineroar, which prevents the parting shot into that potential crowd on there. So uh, it's not going to be a parting shot, though. So, you know, at the end of the day, that taunt not going off doesn't really make any difference here. Flare Blitz going to break the substitute on Fiona's side of things, of course. Uh, a bit of an interesting situation still, because uh, you, the Zacian is faster than the Venusaur, so it could just go for another Behemoth Blade, but it does risk going down to potential Flare Blitz. The Zacian on Fiona's side, bulky, but not insanely bulky based on the HP stat. Yeah, and I mean, if we look at the moves that it's got, right, that we're looking at right now, it's only offensive option is fake out, but you can't even click anymore, right? So you can't take care of the Venusaur yourself. You can maybe try and put it to sleep with that hypnosis if you have the opportunity when you do wake up. But at this point, if the Zacian does not target down into the Venusaur and takes a Flare Blitz knockout, then who do you end up bringing in? Because at that point, if you bring in something like this Kyogre that we're seeing, it could possibly still take a bunch of damage from something in the back. But I think getting the Venusaur off the field is going to be huge for Fiona to make Maybe try and move her positioning around, switching out the Gothitelle, bringing in this Kyogre, setting up the rain. And that means as well that if Chiawat really wanted to, and he wanted to switch in his Groudon on another turn, that would be at least an opportunity for him to change the rain. Behemoth Blade as well, going to be able to knock out this Venusaur, and at least the rain as well is going to allow for that Flare Blitz to be weakened into the Zacian right next to it. This play by Fiona, it covers kind of everything. Um, you know, the parting shot, I think, is definitely the safest play from Chiawat here. Just make sure that he can get out and reset the weather. In this case, it ends up being a really, really good play for him. But I think overall, um, Fiona switching in that Kyogre essentially guarantees that um, the she's not going to lose anything at the very least. Like, uh, Chiawat also not clicking Protect on that Venusaur. It might be a little bit of a tell that it's running Sleep Powder Helping Hand kind of stuff instead of Protect. And uh, that would be very, very valuable information. And I think, especially if Fiona wins this game number one, uh, she can kind of play into that and just assume until proven otherwise that there's no protect on that beam. But look who is here. It is Zernia's pair oh with Groudon against the other two Restricteds on Fiona's side of the field. The sun is in the sky for the Groudon as well, preventing this Kyogre from getting the full use out of a move like Water Spout especially. But we saw Taunt as our, a move that did not get revealed from the Gothitelle. If the Gothitelle came in, gets a Shadow Tag as well stuck in here. You can maybe get something off like a Taunt onto the Xerneas before it goes for its own Geomancy maybe. And then you may have a little bit of a better option to start maybe trying to deal with the Xerneas before it can really kind of get bulked up. But Xerneas in a Dynamax format does at least allow for it to handle some bigger hits that it may not have necessarily allowed for without that uh, boost to its uh, defenses from Geomancy. One of the other things that's worth consideration here is that the Gothitelle is not currently on the field, meaning that there is a possibility for the Incineroar switching right back in, putting that Zacian down at minus one, which is one way to protect the Xerneas as well. Even though it will still take quite a lot of damage from a Behemoth Blade, it would be able to survive. It's going to be Incineroar coming in on Fiona's side of things first, though, at the very least. And uh, this turn, there isn't really that much pressure on this Xerneas now that the Zacian is gone. If Chiawat decided to click that Geomancy button, Things are going to get very rough very, very fast. It does look like, however, Chiawat clicked the Dynamax button, and it looks like that might be a heavy ball, so maybe the Groudon. Yeah, that Groudon being the Dynamax option here 
does show that it's moving faster than this Kyogre, which may just be kind of a weird speed tie, depending on how fast that this Groudon is running, um, because the Kyogre as well, I believe, also went for that Dynamax. So, I mean, it just might be a weird kind of speed tie. It also may just be a slower Kyogre or a faster Groudon, which could, I think, definitely pair well with the Xerneas on the opposite side of the field, but it still at least means that there may be an opportunity for this Groudon to make the most of something like a Max Flare in the sun before the rain comes up. Yeah, that's actually a really interesting speed interaction. Uh, generally, the Assault Vest um, Kyogres will run slower, but they are still going to be faster than no speed invested Groudons, which is what most Groudons are. So we get some really interesting interesting information here, knowing that Chiawat is running some speed investment on that Groudon. But more importantly, the Geomancy goes off, that Power Herb charging it up. Just a single turn, just gigantic boost. You know, two special attack, two special defense, two speed. That thing is not going to take very much damage from a potential Kyogre, especially with just another third boost to that special defensive stat. I really missed that animation. I might be the only person to say that, but I really love the Geomancy animation. I really did miss it, even though it is now also boosted with an extra special defense boost, this Max Geyser in the sun with plus three special defense on the Xerneas and plus one on that Groudon, not doing a whole lot of damage. Will at least set the rain up for later as well and maybe allow for something like the um, Zashin to come and maybe and feel a little bit more safe if it needs to. But at that point as well, you still have your own Incinero on the field. You can maybe go for something like a fake out on the next turn, assuming that the Xerneas doesn't go for a protect. And then then you still take something like another Max Quake though, if you're if you're that Incinero, depending on the item, right? I think at this point, it's it's just kind of a weird position of how hard do you have to stall out this Groudon before you can send in your own Pokemon like Zacian to maybe handle this Xerneas before it gets too frustrating to deal with at some point as well. Incineroar's fake out though into the Xerneas, no protect or anything there. So Xerneas just going to take that and not be able to move Max Quake from the Groudon, showing the Shookaberry on the this Incineroar, so Incineroar will at least be able to handle this Max Quick a little bit better, but you are getting the Xerneas up to plus four special defense, which is probably not great in front of something like the Kyogre, which means that this Zacian is going to, be need, going to need to do something pretty quickly with that massive attack stop that it does have. Something else to consider is that uh, we already saw 25% of the, of the HP on the Zacian on Fiona's side vanish to that substitute. Mm. I don't know my Xerneas calcs very well because nobody really runs it outside of uh, outside of Chiawat, but plus two fairy aura moon blast with stab? I don't know how much that does to Zacian, but it probably does about half at least. That's, I mean, that's true. I, I'm sorry, I'm not really caught up on my Xerneas, uh, my Xerneas stats <laughs> know, here. Right? Dazzling Gleam, though, into the Goth Tell does a ton of damage and a good chunk into the Kyogre as well. Another Max Quake from this Groudon once again, just consistently making the Pokemon on Chiyo outside. Truly Kyogre immune, and no matter if the Groudon is super effectively weak to it, especially with the rain. Another Max Geyser from this Kyogre, really just trying to keep this rain up. At least the weather won't change at the moment, but still not enough to knock this Groudon out. At least with the Gothic Tail, you can get that fake out on the next turn if you want to, but you may still be better served to get the fake out onto the Xerneas on the next turn because it didn't go for a protect through it from that last turn. And honestly, any little tiny bit of damage I think you can do would help at this point, but it's still wake up late, first. so we need to yeah. wake up. Yep. <laughs> so it, it has taken its mandatory sleep turn, so there is a chance that the Gothic Tail will wake up here, but it's only been asleep for one. So it is still fairly unlikely that that thing is going to wake up. It's going to be a big deal if it does. Groudon, I think it's pretty safe to say we've we've confirmed Assault Vest on that thing. Mm -hmm. So a battle of the Assault Vest primals here, which is a little bit interesting. Um, so Fake Out into the Groudon might be an interesting play, but I think you're right. It does kind of have to go into the Xerneas, because otherwise Dazzling Gleam is just picking up a double here very, very easily. Yeah, and I mean, if you're Groudon, right, you can maybe just hope for something like a Prespice Blades miss. Um, having the Gothitelle in at least does make it awkward where in Chiwok can't really move it around. He could just lose, but it's, you know, you're still taking that sleep, but you could just lose the weather control here. Dazzling Gleam, though able to go off without a fake out. Actually not able to knock the Kyogre out here, interestingly, hey. but I still think this Kyogre is slower than the Groudon on every single front. Precipice Blades will connect. So again, this Kyogre speed and Groudon speed interaction to me has been really fascinating. All right, so let's see what the Zacian can do. Um, I, I, I'm i not really sure, uh, you know, because the, the Xerneas is going to be faster, right? The Xerneas is going to be much faster at plus two. I mean, maybe not much faster, but it will be faster. It's probably going to even outspeed Reggie Alecki at this point, uh, or at least it can be built to do that. Zacian will destroy and blow up that Xerneas if it can hit it. 
that's what Chaiwat's going to need to avoid here. But even if it goes into the Zerni, it's like, Precipice Blades is going to do a ton of damage here. I mean, the Intimidate does help quite a, little, quite a bit here. It's going to be a very uphill battle here for Fiona. But I don't think the Xerneas kills the Zacian from here. Yeah, I don't think that Zacian gets knocked out at this point. I think as well, now is still the time to go for that fake out into the Xerneas if you need to. And then maybe just try and take that knockout with a Behemoth Blade. Again, we still still haven't seen any Protect, which is, which is you know, a move that Xerneas love to have in the back. Without the Scothitelle, though, Groudon is happy to switch out, bring an Incineroar for Chiawat, get an Intimidate off onto this Xerneas, which may be one of the few things that Chiawat needs to maybe try and help his own Xerneas kind of stay on track here. You know, it's it's kind of a funky, kind of a funky thing. Fake out actually going into what was the Groudon, just trying to get that knockout from Fake Out. Dazzling Gleam from the Xerneas though, connects onto both. Easy enough to knock out that Incineroar. Zacian able to hang on pretty comfortably, but won't be able to take, I believe, one more of those. Goes for a substitute instead. Uh, uh, so a really on the interesting protect. protect read, yeah. Yeah, I think that's gotta be it. I mean, the Zacian, it can't 1v3. It's got no HP. Uh, We'll see. Maybe a P Blades miss gets gets uh, Fiona out of this, but uh, I don't really know what the game plan is here. I think you need to crit the Insin with Sacred Sword, and then also dodge a P Blades, and then also hope that Chiawat clicked P Blades for some reason instead of a more accurate move. So I do like uh, I, I, I it makes sense to to forfeit there. At the end of the day, there a really uphill position for Fiona to try to come back from. She had to make a hard read, and uh, she just didn't get it right. And that's how it goes sometimes. She led hard for Xerneas, though, right? She read Zacian and Gothitelle, and we know, we saw the Gothitelle's moveset. A fake out plus a taunt would be a great way to really stop the Xerneas. Sending in Zacian as well does threaten that Xerneas from even wanting to come on the field as a lead. So I think it's, at least for Fiona, I'm glad the Xer Xerneas came. I'm very happy to have seen it. I missed it a lot. It was the restricted, one of the restricteds that I was able to use in Ultra Series, and I did I did enjoy using it quite a lot. But, you know, I think if you're Fiona and you lead hard for Xerneas and it does not come out and you're dealing with something maybe like that Venusaur, who we now know has sleep powder and can be pretty disruptive, you may need to try and go for something that can stop that Venusaur early because that Venusaur getting that sleep powder off meant that that Gothitelle was really not helpful for, honestly, the rest of the game. A little surprised that we saw Xerneas come to game one there, but I, I even though I didn't expect to see Xerneas, I do quite... I do understand and appreciate the lead that Fiona went for, because if you go for something like a Zacian uh, Gothitelle lead, and then you win the game, you know you're very, very, you're very much limiting what Chaiwat can do as an adaptation, because you're not going to lead Xerneas into somebody who just beat you with a Gothitelle Zacian lead. Like, it cuts down a lot of the, uh, the potential possibilities that Chaiwat could feasibly go for in game number two, and really puts Fiona in a position where she can try to go for a hard read if she's up game one, uh, up one zero, and just try to close out the game immediately to zero. Unfortunately, though, yeah, okay, it's Sashi and Gothitelle again into Insin, uh, uh, Venusaur. Interesting. I'm not quite sure how to feel about this, but I feel like Chaiwat's going to be pretty happy with it. I almost feel like you almost, if you're the Zacian, right, you either have to protect or go for that substitute this turn, because I don't know if Chaiwat, I mean, at that point, right, because if you go for the protect or the substitute, you still are baiting that sleep powder into the goth tell. You can match fake out for fake out into the Incineroar and have the faster fake out itself. If you fake out into the Venusaur, then you may have a better opportunity to maybe get a substitute off, but I think the safest choice for that Venusaur every single turn is to just go for the fake out onto the Zosh, and you've already got the opportunity as well to just go for something, you know, you don't even need to go for a parting shot. You can do that on the next turn. You already have the slower fake out. I don't, I don't know if I see this turn going in any way that's going to be different than turn one of last game. Yeah, there, I don't really... I, I liked this lead in game one because of the potential um, the potential that I had to snowball the set if Fiona won. I don't like this for game two because think, keep in mind as well, turn one actually went her favor pretty well. There was Correct. a sleep powder miss in there and it still went pretty poorly. So uh, we'll see exactly how she wants to play this one out. <laughs> big crit there on the Incineroar. Huge. Huge crit. Um, it, yeah, that's uh, gonna be gonna be real big as the substitute comes on down. And uh, like you said, I don't know why you wouldn't sleep powder into no! the goth. Oh my oh god! My so the only change that turn was the critical hit on the fake out. <laughs> yeah. uh, truly, very important critical hit whatsoever. But Venusaur sleep powder once again missing. 
Now you have the opportunity to, again to go for that taunt onto, once again, the Incineroar or even onto the Venusaur, but you're still letting this Venusaur have the opportunity to click Sleep Powder once more. The Zacian going for Behemoth Blade. We saw this wasn't enough to get that knockout in game one. Still allowed for this Venusaur to hang on and hang out within this game. So I'm not sure if you have to beg for either a crit or a miss at some point, but once again, that Venusaur pretty much standardized to hang out for that. No Another Sleep Powder miss. Got the tell getting the taunt off onto that Incineroar. Not going to be able to use something like that parting shot in this turn if it wanted to and flare blitz was chosen once again like in game one into the zashin substitute just to break it but this is where the big change is this this gothitelle is not asleep i'm not gonna lie Maeve. i still don't really like this position for fiona <laughs> because like i feel like now you click hypnosis into the incineroar but if you miss your 60 percent accurate move your zashin just dies to flare blitz here doesn't it I, I don't I don't know. I mean we've seen we've seen some pretty crazy luck so far. Chiawat's only hit one out of four sleep powders, so if, if maybe this is the day that Gothitelle will hit that blind hypnosis. Maybe or, or switch in the ogre again. Uh, I mean really she is playing this game the exact same as she did in the last one and uh, it's working a lot better so far with the uh, with the uh, the sleep powder dodges. Gothitelle basically acting like Neo here. I mean, yeah, I can see that that Gothitelle's holding a Focus Sash, but it might as well be holding Brave Powder with all the Sleep Powder <laughs> she's been able to dodge. However, is going to switch out this turn, bring in the Incineroar, maybe trying to see if an Intimidate instead of having the Rain Up would be enough to protect the uh, Zacian next to it from getting fully knocked out by something like a Flare Blitz. But Zacian's still going to be able to move first with Behemoth Blade, still going to be able to most likely take this Venusaur off of the field for Venusaur not getting the day that it wanted to in game two. I think also if you're Fiona, right, like at that point you are still down a game and if this was your game plan that you prepped for against something like Xerneas it's it's hard to really kind of prep for a full game of it but still flare blitz into the Zacian thanks to that intimidate as well I think pretty helpful in keeping that Zacian able to hang out for another turn also having Incineroar in here I think on this turn is going to be really interesting to move into the next game because at this point they have the Kyogre in so by sending in the Groudon now you have the opportunity to maybe go for a fake out if the Xerneas, if the Groudon is still your Dynamax answer, then you at least can get some big damage off with something like a Behemoth Blade and fake out into the Incineroar slot on the opposite side. But, you know, I, I'm not I'm not entirely sure. Well, this is still a really rough position for Fiona, I think. Uh, especially with Incineroar being on the field already, Groudon is free to go for a Dynamax without fear of Intimidate right now. Uh, the Zashian is too low to sub, so even like trying to read, so, like trying to position for Zashian to get a sub up, that's not going to be an option. Gothitelle comes back in here. I guess we'll see the Shuckaberry is going to be more than enough to, to protect the uh, the instant on Fiona's side for this turn at least. But now it's Xerneas in play. Parting shot I think was clicked, so Zashian could come back into play. Mm, this looks like it might actually end up being a pretty good turn here for Fiona. But, uh, you know, the Groudon is going to Dynamax, and it is going to have that opportunity to dish out quite a lot of damage here. I think the thing I like at least about Fiona's play, right, is that she'd send in the Incineroar, but then also hard switch into the Gothitelle just to cover maybe if that Xerneas came in on the following turn, because then you still have the opportunity to click Fake Out, and then if the Incineroar gets that parting shot off, then you can maybe go for something like sending in your Zacian. But Max Quick looks like it's targeting into the Gothitelle this turn. It won't get knocked out thanks to that Focus Sash at bare minimum, so it's still able to hang on does hang on with more than just what would be a piece of focus sash hp special defense boost though already getting started on these pokemon parting shot into the ground and will lower that attack at least make it tougher maybe for the zashin who would want to come back in to do as much damage as it maybe was thinking to do at this point too like I said, we haven't seen Protect on this Xerneas, so you may have a really nice fake out Behemoth Blade if you really wanted to, or send in the Kyogre, go for a fake out, and then get off something like a Max, uh, either a Max Geyser, or just go for that Water Pulse or Water Spout with that uh, full HP in the rain. Yeah, this is an interesting situation, right? Because with the Intimidate cycling, with the Sashi, and with the Kyogre having an Assault Vest, the Xerneas is a very, very key part of Chiawat's endgame. Uh, he, he can't risk losing the Xerneas here. But, at the same time, uh, uh, you know, like, the, the Groudon is faster, plus one Max Quake is going to be pretty good, Xerneas probably has access to Protect, and also has pretty good base uh, special defense and a really mm -hmm. high base HP stat, so an Assault Best Kyogre is not going to be able to dish out necessarily the most damage here. Uh, and especially with Fake Out coming in, if there is a Max Quake going into the Kyogre, preventing a switch into the Zacian, Taiwat could definitely still pull off a Geomancy here next turn. 
Yeah, got Kyogre going for that Dynamax here. This isn't like yesterday's match where we saw the Kyogre with something like a uh, Ancient Power for a coverage move. Not exactly a Steel or Poison type move that I could cover for Xerneas, but Gothitelle's Fake Out, at least preventing the Xerneas for one more turn from clicking the Geomancy button. Groudon going for Max Quake on this turn as well. Also able to target into this Kyogre again, getting those special defense boosts that once this Geomancy can get clicked and can go up, it's going to make this Xerneas an absolute tank, right? You can still have your Zacian in back, but Zacian's not exactly the Pokemon that is able to maybe break through both of these. It can only target into one, but the Max Geyser into the Xerneas already takes it down below half of its HP and keeps okay. the weather in the favor for this Kyogre. I actually really like that decision to not protect by Chiawat, uh, because basically going for the Geomancy there covers for Zacian coming in for the Gothitelle, and he I, he knows his Calx very well as the creator of this team, and has identified that the Kyogre is Assault Vest, so he knows that if he clicks Geomancy now, as long as he doesn't get crit, uh, he will live the follow-up Max Geyser, because he's going to go from plus one to plus four before that hits in, and then from there, <laughs> you're faster than the Zacian, and maybe can get away with sweeping with the, with the, um, the Xerneas. So overall, uh, Chiawat putting himself in a position where a crit will lose him the game, but, um, you know, that, that's pretty good odds oh. overall. Helping Hand, though, might be enough? I, Helping I Hand? Like... We'll see. Maybe. We'll see, right? Like you said, you could have also, I would have been interested to see if there was something like a blind hypnosis there to target into the Xerneas after it got up something like the Geomancy that it's doing right now, but Geomancy with that power, I'm going to be able to get it up to what will be most likely plus four this turn, currently plus three in special defense, thanks to the max quake from that Groudon. But like we've seen, Groudon has been able to move first and Groudon's max flare will change I the weather it. into the sun, into Gothitelle as well, getting this Gothitelle off of the field and meaning that the uh, max geyser from this Kyogre is going to be doing less damage thanks to having the sun on this turn. And I think that is going to be a yeah. really smart play from Chiawat just to fully ensure that this does very little damage onto that Xerneas. Jeez, even with Helping Hand, gosh, that is a that is a measly amount of damage there. Yeah, that is a sad, sad moment for that Kyogre. Uh, from here, though, game's not over yet. You know, there's yeah. still rain up now, Incineroar with fake out pressure. Zacian still exists in the back. Um, there's one more turn of Dynamax here as well for the Kyogre, so... You know, I, I guess like this is where we really do need to see a protector on that Xerneas, but uh, we'll see. This is gonna be an interesting turn. There's no way to reset the weather this turn. Maybe a switch into the Incineroar with a protect. Uh, either way, you know, it, it's all about retaining the Xerneas. If Chiawat can retain the Xerneas, he's in a good spot because it does outspeed that uh, that that Zacian in the back, and with plus two, it's gonna do really good damage into basically everything. Yeah, I mean, at this point, right, I think if you can... The Xerneas, it got up the Geomancy, but at the cost of still taking a lot of damage. And at this point, you're still able to at least get one fake out. The Intimidate onto the Groudon definitely helps as well, because having your own Zacian in back, the Groudon is probably more of a threat to you than the Zacian, or than the Xerneas maybe feel like it, feels like it is, but it's still a Xerneas with a Geomancy, right? So it's still not exactly something you can count out. You probably just need to try and get off that damage. You have to call maybe a Protect this turn, or a change in Pokemon, sending the Groudon on out, bringing in the Incineroar. You could have gone for a Max Geyser into that target. It probably would have still been a pretty safe call either way. But still, you know, I think the Xerneas may still be a big threat. If the, if the Incineroar comes in this turn trying to call something like a Zacian switch in, then you at least cover for that as well. But having your own Incineroar be slower is really great because you're not taking that Intimidate from the Incineroar on the other side. And that just may show why this faster Groudon might just be a little bit of a tricky Pokemon to send in and out because now having the slower uh, Zacian versus that... Uh, from the Incineroar on the opposite side helps. And there's the Protect, finally. So we do confirm that there is a Protect on this Xerneas. So through this Max Geyser, will not do that full amount of damage. And really, the Xerneas is so comfortable right now. I'm not sure how I feel about that Zacian switch in. So here's the issue, right? Chiawat brings in the Incin. What is stopping Chiawat from just clicking Dazzling Gleam and then fake out into the Kyogre here? Uh, I don't know if... Fiona has an out now. Uh, I, I feel like bringing in that Zacian was just not necessary. I mean, she was in a rough spot anyway. Well, we'll see if she can fight her way out of this, but she's going to bring in her own Zacian here. Fake out into the Kyogre slot is uh, pretty free. Obviously, the Kyogre switching out is going to be kind of nice, but Gleam is going to do a lot of damage to this Incineroar, and then the uh, Xerneas could just protect the fake out next turn. So I'm interested to see how Fiona's trying to play this out. She very well could be seeing something that I'm not. 
I mean, I guess, right, if you're you're dealing with a fake out on this first turn, then you don't have the fake out on the next turn. If you predict a fake out on the turn after this, then you can target down into the slot where the Groudon or Incineroar would be. Fake out into the Incineroar on Fiona's side will at least handle this Dazzling Gleam better than that Kyogre would as well, just thanks to it being, you know, maybe not as effective. Incineroar still takes so much damage from that, though. You have the opportunity for your own fake out. Xerneas is not going to want to switch out here. I don't know if Xerneas is really all that worried as well from taking a fake out because it almost worry that it's done its job and Groudon would just kind of need to come in here. But there's still the opportunity for weather to change. If you send in your Groudon, then your Kyogre can come in and change the weather once again if it needs to. Groudon coming in here for the Incineroar, you still have an opportunity to maybe target into that with something like a Behemoth Blade and just get that damage off and call that Protect. But if the Xerneas knows that you're most likely going to call the Protect, maybe, maybe still, then you target into a double, but protect this turn from the Xerneas, I think your safest play consistently is just to go for this fake out into the Xerneas, and that makes a lot of sense, right? There's no there's no reason not to do it. Sacred Sword from the Zacian into that Groudon does a nice chunk of damage as well, at least for free at the moment. Yeah, I have to say, Chaiwa played out this end game so, so, so well. That's it, the game's over now, actually. Yeah. <laughs> there is no more out. 100% accurate moves from Xerneas, outspeeding everything on the field, everything that is an option. Uh, once again, the Incineroar is going to come back in. This is going to offer Chiawat a fake out into the incoming uh, Kyogre, which will replace the, the Incineroar that's about to go down. Just such a well-played endgame that just showed complete mastery of knowing the defensive calcs on that Xerneas. Um, you know, Chiawat was able to identify that that was an Assault Vest Kyogre in game number one and used that information to identify, oh, I can do things like click, uh, like I can click Geomancy into what's probably a fake out to cover for every possible option. A lot of the times that Chiawat went for moves here that, you know, not protecting the fake out, for example, that really isn't him going for a read at all. It's him covering all of the options because he just knew that he was going to survive the hits that he needed, even in a worst case scenario. And Chiawat just played this, this set out phenomenally. Just a really, really masterful positioning of the Xerneas here in this game number two. And I mean, you can imagine, right, this is why he won Nationals with this team, and most likely a great reason to send this player into play at what is clearly a match point. Double Protect does not connect here. Fake out into the Kyogre, a pretty clear option. Kyogre not exactly able to click Protect on its own. Moonblast single target into that Zacian. That Double Protect not going off means that you did not get to really uh, handle that damage that turn, but it definitely makes sense to click a single target move, especially because you can worry about the Kyogre on this turn with its own single target target move later, send in the Groudon to change the weather if you really need to as well, just to kind of secure that final piece of the game. You know, Incineroar can then come back in, get another fake out off, send in the Xer allow the Xerneas to maybe just click Dazzling Gleam this turn, and then maybe when you send in your own, um, when you get the knockout maybe on the Xerneas, bring in your own Incineroar, click fake out once again, and just allow for your Groudon to use one of the single target moves that it has full accuracy, just to kind of clean up at this point. Uh, Moonblast is going to do a ton of damage. Again, Geomancy Xerneas is a Pokemon that I feel like we got slept on quite a bit this season. Of course, we say that there's still so many strong Pokemon out there that can handle it. Origin Pulse from the Kyogre in the sun into both of these Pokemon, though, not even able to knock out the Xerneas. I think that did maybe four damage. Yeah, the Moonblast drop, of course, hurt a little bit, but even to that, it wouldn't have knocked out. And, you know, with the Assault Vest and the lack of a Protect, you just fake out the, the Kyogre again next turn. And uh, you mentioned before, like, we haven't really seen Xerneas, and, on, and uh, you know, uh, Chiawat just made it look really, really strong. So why haven't we seen more Xerneas? Entirely because it is just an incredibly hard Pokemon to pilot in this meta and in this format, because the format is so centralized around Pokemon like, you know, Zacian, which kind of explode the, 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 uh, the Xerneas. So, you know, it, it's very, very, very difficult to pilot. And I think we did sort of get a glimpse of that in that set, just how specific every and how well thought out every move that Chiawat made was. And it just showed a, a complete mastery of an incredibly difficult archetype. And uh, yeah, just a really, really impressive match. And that is enough to secure a top four berth for Thailand, I think, right? Correct. Yes, they were up 3-1 over Poland. I've been waiting to say that. I'm so excited that we've been able to wrap all four corners of our semi of our quarterfinals today and at least show as well that it is going to be a tough match for France to get through Thailand as Thailand clearly showing a lot of strength and a lot of momentum coming through some strong wins against Japan and against Poland, but looking at this top four, truly an incredibly different top four than what we had last year, but so exciting to see 
all four new teams in this section of top four, which means one of these po one of these teams will be the champion and it will not be a repeat from last year. South Korea was the only other group in this entire top eight that had made it to that stage last year. So super exciting. Canada versus Australia and France versus Thailand, truly from all parts of the world. I think we've got somewhere from nearly every region. Yeah, we've got Europe, we've got North America, we got uh, Thai, we've got like Asia, and then we have Oceania with with Australia as well. So overall, just this really is a World Cup top four. You know, it looks really really cool. Uh, I'm excited to see exactly what happens here. On the one side, we have Canada and Australia, two teams that uh, notably underperformed last year and are now just taking names left and right here in the top four. One of them is going to have a shot at that winning uh, at that at that title here. And on the other side, we have France. And Thailand, I think France uh, created a little bit of an underdog status for themselves after the way they started in this tournament. You know, they started with an 8-0 loss. So a lot of people were thinking, oh, okay, I mean, maybe France isn't going to have what it takes in this kind of a format, but absolutely not. Here they are in the top four. And then Thailand, one of the teams that I've said it a couple times already this year is just one of the most slept on teams. You know, like Thailand and Singapore just continually super slept on and really, really good. And they have a chance to go all the way to the finals now as well. Yeah, here is the uh, score final between Thailand and Poland. We don't have that last match in as of yet, but you can at least see as well, Thailand had already gone 5-1. A little trap pinch in there from Jong Dae Jung uh, against Bartek Kuskowski, which I think is an interesting one to look at as well. But huge congrats to Thailand. And also, you know, all four of our top four teams are now going to be receiving some prize money, which I think is a really great thing, especially when you play in a tournament like this. You know, all top four teams receive 500 US dollars. The runner-up receives 1,500 and the champion receives 2,500 US dollars. And that is not a number to really, uh, to really shake a stick at at some point. You know, I'm really excited, especially as we get to move on into the top four next week to see how this begins to shake up and see what these teams are doing to prep for such a pivotal moment in this tournament. And of course, that prize money would not be possible without our wonderful partners here, Elgato, GG Tour, and Metafi, who have been just the just fantastic supporters of the World Cup of VGC. And, uh, you know, a lot of this would not be possible without the partners. So big shout outs to them. And of course, big shout outs to everybody behind the scenes working at VR. It's, uh, it's a very, very large team. It takes a lot of work to put on a tournament like this, let alone organize high quality streams and all of that as well. So, you know, big shout outs to everybody involved. This World Cup has been the best yet, and I can't wait to see how it concludes. And I can't wait to see how next year is, because every year is just a step up from the year before. <laughs> And speaking of Victory Road, right, there are plenty of ways for you to follow along in the week between our casting, joining the community, following all of our social medias, the the, uh, the Twitter, VGC Victory Road. I'm sure we will be tweeting out that bracket that you guys just saw that graphic of and the YouTube as well. All of the matches from today, which there were some really good ones if you weren't able to catch them all, including yesterday's as well, will be put onto the YouTube. Thank you all for joining us on the Twitch as well. Join the Discord if you haven't, and you can keep up with the results as they come in for those that have been played throughout the week on WorldCupVGC.com. Lots of great ways to kind of check up on how your favorite team or how your pick is doing. But still, once again, so exciting to kind of be wrapping up the World Cup. It's really sad to me that we only have a few weeks left before we will be saying goodbye for the moment. But then once that's wrapped up, then we can begin to kind of think too about that Scarlet and Violet kind of tying in at a great time to end, take a little mental break before we move on into a new format. But Series 12, I think, is going to go out with a bang for this World Cup. Yeah, we're already seeing like it's really cool to me to see how players are continuing to innovate on the post worlds meta, despite the fact that they're really, like most players are not practicing series 12 anymore. Everybody's moved on to Spike Myth Cup. So, uh, you know, it's really, really cool to see that the the effort that these guys are still putting in to innovate on the the existing meta. And I can't wait to see what what they bring to the table next week. Yeah, another thing, too, that I did not mention that I usually do, so I'm surprising myself here. Also, all the matches that you see that we do stream here will be put on YouTube, but there are also some matches that we don't stream that are also featured just between some of the players are able to upload those to us, and then we can put them on. So there's even more action for you guys to check out on the YouTube channel as well. However, that is going to do it for us today. A huge thank you for everybody who has tuned in this week. We will be back next week on Friday, most likely, I believe, as has, as has been the custom. 
for the next section of stream matches. And do not go anywhere between now and then. I mean, you can, I guess, if you have to go to work. But either way, you know, keep your eyes peeled on the Victory Road Twitter just to consistently get those updates between now and the next days of stream. Thank you so much to everybody for watching. Thank you once again to our sponsors, El Gato, Gigi Tour, and Metafi. And once again, thank you, Stefan, for having so much fun with me on casting this weekend and Evan as well. Have a good week, guys. We'll be back with those top four matches on Friday.